Okay, Christian, this this stash is new. I saw you <laughs> tweeting about it. Tell me about the yeah. process of, of growing that. <laughs> pure pure boredom. It's a terrible it's a terrible look, but um, yeah, nobody actually believed that I was gonna do it or had it going on, but here it is. It's it's awful, but it's awesome at the same time. Yeah, I saw some other players making fun of you saying they didn't think you could even grow a, a stash like that. Just just <laughs> Travis Shaw, but he can't grow hair on the top of his head. So he was coming at me for my mustache. So I, I didn't want to bury him on, on social media like that. But we FaceTimed after that. And we, we were kind of uh, going back and forth a little bit. That's funny. I mean, hair on the top of the head, mustache, you know, I, I feel like you're you're winning that battle. <laughs> I saw that you and Ryan Braun, you guys teamed up with Third Street Market to mm -hmm. provide meals for healthcare workers in Wisconsin. Um, why that initiative? Why that task? Walk me through that. It's great. Yeah, it was brought to us by Omar. And if anybody's been in Milwaukee or familiar with Milwaukee, all you know Omar. He does a bunch of stuff in the, in the community, he has a bunch of restaurants, does a bunch of great things. So he uh, called me and Ryan one night, or maybe he sent us a group text. I forgot which one it was, but he was the one that initiated. He, he was like, hey, I got this great idea. I'll help facilitate it. And uh, me and Ryan were like, yeah, sure. I mean, of course, um, if you're in a position to help, I think you should, especially in times like this. And uh, he did a great job. And then some sponsors jumped on board, American Family, Associated Bank, Sargento, uh, Line and Google, a bunch of Milwaukee companies. So <laughs> in a perfect world, like what version of the baseball season would you be down with? I mean, I think at this point, no idea is a, a bad idea. I think you should listen to them all, weigh all the options. Um, I think a lot of it's just, it's so TBD because nobody really knows a timeline. Like it's, it's easier to plan a season and plan playoffs or whatever when you know like what time frame you're working with. Um, you were a part of that big fire sale in Miami that included you, know, you Stanton, Ozuna leaving. Um, mm -hmm. It was definitely a crazy time in baseball. That day was wild. Mm -hmm. When you reflect, how did you feel about it the day that it was happening? And how do you feel about it right now? Like the day I got traded? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, when you get traded, it's a pretty wild process. Uh, I didn't know if I was like that off season, they traded, they traded Mikey or I guess John Carlo Stanton and mm -hmm. I call him Mikey still. But. <laughs> I was like, who's Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> That's John Carlo for everybody now, but back in the day he was Mikey. So I still call him that or G whatever. And then they traded uh, Ozuna too. And after that, I, was, I thought I was going to get traded, but I went through phases of like, okay, I'm for sure going to get traded. I'm not going to get traded. Maybe I'm going to get traded. I don't really know because you're not really in that loop unless you have a no trade clause and they have to run it through you, but I didn't have one. So it's really out of my hands whether they're going to trade me or not. I missed the call and I had like a message and um, text from uh, the GM with Mike Hill at the time. I think he still is there. Uh, and then my agent had a missed call and a text from him. And so by the time I got back to my phone, I had all these like notifications that from people that I was like, oh, I think I probably got traded. So I should probably call somebody back here and see what's up and find out where I'm actually going. Um, and yeah, that's really how it happens. It's not like, a big production or anything you get a phone call and they tell you that they traded you and that's really the last time that you're a part of the organization so um is it safe to say obviously based on your contracts and things that you've said that you want to be a brewer for life do you envision yourself being a brewer for life yeah for sure and i think um before all this happened the contract was one of those things where it was like yeah this is what i want to do I, I mean i'd be there i think through my age 36 season which um, who knows if that'll be the last year that I end up playing, but that's going to be a significant chunk of my career. And, um, it's nine years from now, plus the two that I've already, already played there. So it'd be 11 years in a, in a Brewers uniform. So the majority of my career at least would definitely be there. And, um, uh, I would love to finish my career. I think it'd be great. I really love the city. I love the fan base. Uh, I love Miller park and everything that comes with it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. You are very you pleasant. It. Yeah, thank you so much. It's uh, <laughs> it's giving me something to do, you know. I get something yeah. other than just staring at the TV all day, waiting to go to sleep. 